Good morning. Good Good looking crew out here this morning. So not that any of the others aren't, by the way. Y'all can't tell those that maybe couldn't make it today that we look better than you do or anything like that. So just starting off with a compliment this morning. So it is good to be in the house of the Lord with you this morning. Uh, If you're joining with us on social media, we're glad that you're a part of us this morning um, as well. So it was a very special day set aside, uh, which is that of Mother's Day. Uh, And I would just extend that to all of our ladies as well, too. So uh, very uh, excited about the uh, potential uh, of what we have in this service today to celebrate that and uh, the uh, magnificence thereof. So get into that here in just a minute. I want to go through some announcements with you. Um, And if you're visiting with us today, we're certainly glad to have you here at St. Clair Baptist Church. It'll be um, the cause of Mother's Day and uh, provide an opportunity for those uh, to be able to go out and visit um, today in different things. There'll be no night services tonight. Uh, we will have Wednesday night Bible study at 7 o'clock. And then also the last Saturday uh, morning of this month, we'll be having a men's prayer breakfast, and that'll be at 8 a.m. And if you can come out and help cook, that starts at 7 a.m. So that's the last Saturday of this month. Um, and then the last Wednesday night of each month, we'll have what's called missions night where we have ladies' groups, men's groups, and then, of course, uh, also venues for the children as well. Uh, So uh, be thinking about being able to come out to that. And, of course, our Wednesday night studies in general at 7 o'clock. And just a reminder that our um, we don't pass the offering plate, but they're in the foyer. Most everybody knows that, but sometimes they get hid behind stuff and we get asked where they're at. So they're in the foyer there somewhere. And I I do want to thank my wife for putting up a schedule of May events there, and then I think also Barbara had put up some stuff to help with uh, some venues coming up. So those are really helpful, and appreciate you ladies helping with that. So uh, remember, in May the 11th, so we'll go through the announcements for May, May the 11th being the National Day of Prayer, and that's going to be at the uh, First Baptist Church in Dayton there at 6.30 a.m. Do we still have any spots? So we have a few spots available if you want to get with a Villa or Jim or whoever there and uh, the church reserved two tables for that, so uh, you're welcome to go to that. Um, May the 15th will be our senior recognition morning. Uh, in lieu of Sunday school that morning, we'll have uh, breakfast. Uh, looking for everybody to bring just kind of some uh, finger foods or dish, whatever, for that. And we'll celebrate our seniors. Um, and also on May the 21st is J-Fest, and that's going to be in Chattanooga. That's an all-day event. We have a sign-up sheet there and tickets available for that still. Uh, then May the, let's see, May the 29th, in lieu of our evening services, uh, we'll be uh, having a get-together that evening at Spring City Nature Park. All are invited, and that'd be for our, um, just having a cook out there in time to get together. And then upcoming, way out there, uh, just looking at some uh, vacation Bible school and asking you to be in prayer about that. That's going to be June the 6th through the 10th. Um, so we'll be looking at that, and then possibly on June the 5th, the Youth Sunday. So if the youth wouldn't listen, they probably are now. So that's that's possible. So more details to come, but be in prayer about all that. Barbara. Can I say a word about Bible school? Oh, sure. A couple even. <laughs> Vacation Bible school, I'm looking forward to it. And, and I know all the kids are. It's the first time in a couple of years we've got to do, and we just pray that everything will be safe for us to uh, go ahead and, and do Bible school like we always have. So uh, I've got a sign-up sheet back on the board, and if you'll just put your... God has gifted everybody with something they can do to help these children. Amen. This is a great opportunity yes. for outreach for our community, for our church, to reach the children in our community. So I'm asking you all to please sign up. Uh, there's places for teachers, recreation people, food, um, everything, classroom helpers. Uh, all kinds of different opportunities, crafts, uh, those things that the kids look forward to every summer. So please sign up and we'll have a planning meeting as soon as we get everything kind of together. So uh, we're going to be the best Bible school we've ever had and reach as many children as we can. And by the way, kids, you are on the promotion committee, whether you know it or not, because you need to tell other kids to come. That's right. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Barbara. So so very well said there. And if you were part of our Wednesday night Bible study a couple, three weeks ago, we were looking at some, uh, we were studying about children and the attitude as, as Christians and as, as adults that we're supposed to have is that as a child. But 
we're also talking about the impacts on children and, and that critical um, part of winning those to Christ are in those early <clears throat> years oftentimes. And do we have that opportunity through vacation Bible school to do that. So if you're looking for a way to be used, and I hope we all are, there's, there's a great venue there and avenue through Vacation Bible School to do that. And as Barbara said, we all have a talent of, that we can contribute to that. And so I would ask that you be praying about that and asking the Lord where, how and where he could use you in that process. So thank you, Barbara. All right, before we get into Mother's Day stuff, do we have any birthdays this past week? No birthdays. Oh, Jerry, look like you might have one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he ain't he real happy about having one, though, I don't think. <laughs> Hope had one, Mike. Hope had a happy birthday. Hope, Jerry, somebody say, Sharon, you say, Sharon, you sit back there, boy, poker facing it, I mean. <laughs> okay. Oh, well. Well, all right, mistake then. Well, that's why she got a poker face in. It makes sense now. I thought, man, I don't ever go up against her in a card game, but so it makes sense now. What about anniversaries this past week? <laughs> no anniversary. All right. Well, something uh, that uh, I was telling before uh, Sunday school this morning that we all have in common is that we all have a mother. And, you know, so uh, most oftentimes always and there's a special uh, recognition there and story and memories to go along with them. And Harold was telling us in Sunday school this morning a really special story about he and his mom. He'd picked her up in Dayton one morning and was traveling to somewhere in Chattanooga direction and somewhere on Chickamauga Dam as he was witnessing to her, she was ready to accept Christ. And they pulled over on the side of the road when they crossed the dam and right there it took place that she accepted the Lord. And I thought, man, there's a great Mother's Day, you know, and Mother's memory right there that he had. And I asked him, I said, you care if I share that a little bit? Because uh, how many years ago was that, Harold? Do you know? I can't remember. Can't remember, so. But it's special. I don't think I'll ever cross that dam and not think about that story that you shared. So, But it goes without saying that our mothers are special. You know, God sends, uh, uh, I'm oftentimes amazed in, as we look in nature and things around us, uh, the things that he is just screaming to us to observe. Out here in the parking lot, Surely you've seen those two little orange cones that have been sitting there. Now, I know a lot of people think it's just because Jim wanted a special place to park, but it's not, it's not that at all. <laughs> there's, a, there's a little mama bird out there, a little killdeer, and they make their nest in the gravel. And she's been coming back for several years now, or the offspring or something has. Uh, but when, when you pull a car up next to her and all that, she'll kind of fluff up, and then she'll do things to distract you. And even on a lawnmower, she's willing to take it on because she has that much love for those offspring that she has in the nest out there. Uh, now, did you say that they had hatched now? So that's why the, this morning I saw the daddy out there running around. He just kind of want to see what happened, you know. But it's been all mama out there. But I thought, man, what a better thing to look at, uh, you know, a simplistic view of the love that a mother has. Uh, and, it's, and it's right here, and it's been right in front of our face for several weeks now. And it happens every year, and it's happening right at Mother's Day. So... There are all kind of examples like that, but uh, I know within our own communities and families, we all have wonderful stories as well about the leadership of ladies and how special mothers are. But this morning, uh, just a couple of things I want to go through. First of all, all ladies will get a rose as they exit today. So make sure you get a rose and they'll be in the foyer and people have them back there. And I don't think there's anything specific to the colors. Uh, we do appreciate those that went and got these and have them available this morning, but just for recognition purposes only, and this is part of the uh, thing that we've done as a tradition at our church, uh, we've always wanted to recognize um, some of our mothers here. So uh, we'd like to recognize our youngest mother here this morning, and uh, I'll start out with a, with a low age, and y'all just raise your hand when I get to your age there. So we have any mother that's 18, 19, 20? 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Well, Barbara, I'm glad you taught me math. <laughs> 28. <laughs> if I mess up, it's not her fault. 29, 30, 31, 
31. We got it right here, Miss Mandy. So let's give Mandy a hand. All right. Awesome. And so this was always, uh, uh, yeah. So now we're going to do the most senior mother here. And uh, we'll start at the ripe age of 95. Uh, 95? 94, I feel like an auctioneer up here. 94, 93, 91, 90, 89, 88, 87, 85. All right, we got a hand up with Miss Sue. Uh, now we're going to recognize the mother present with the most children present. So if you have, are the Waltons here this morning? Let's start out with about eight kids. Anybody have eight kids here this morning? Not counting your neighbor's kids that you have to feed and raise. I mean, they're really your seven kids, six, five, four, three. No, we got three. So we got two at three here. We got Stella and Mandy. Anybody else? All right, let's give them a round. All right, so we're very thankful for our for all of our uh, moms and ladies here this morning. All right, I'd like to invite our Bible readers up at this time. Proverbs 1, 8 and 9. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. <laughs> Proverbs six twenty, verses 20 through 22. My son, keep your father's command, and do not forsake the law of your mother. Bind them continually upon your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you roam, they will lead you. When you sleep, they will keep you. And when you awake, they will speak with you. appreciate our, our scripture this morning and also just seeing the importance that God's placed about the mothers uh, there in scripture. I'll go through our prayer list at this time and I'll read through those uh, now. Uh, just bear with me here and then we'll have a chance at the end to uh, update these. We've got Cody Isham, Thelma Wood, Phil's niece Monique, Tommy Stennett, Chester Ezel, Connor Roy, Brother Harold's Uncle Tommy, Tina Peak. Sue Smith, Joshua and Caleb, Mary Knight's grandparents, Jim Newby, Earl Wright, Liam Holland, Stephen Leonard Newby, Janet Branscombe, Andrew Theobald, Erlene's granddaughters, Robert Lynn Smith, Michelle Melton's daughter, Sarah, Unspokens, Cindy Smith, Coley Canfield, Heath Latshaw with recovery, uh, Denise Latshaw with her upcoming treatments, Buddy Carraway, Eva Dunnigan, Grady Sue Parker, Mary Rowden, uh, Mickey, and also Mickey's mom, sister, and grandson, Latell Cunningham, and we heard this morning that there's been some progress, positive direction with her, and also thankful for the baskets that was sent to her uh, with the items in it. Uh, Melissa's dad and mom, Dwayne Geno and daughter, uh, praise for April, Taft Moffitt, Jennifer Tollett, J.E. Reed, Nolan Cantrell, our graduates, Farrell Arnold, 
Beth Cheryl's dad, Hazel Henry, Mary Hill, Stanley Cunningham, Harold Goins, Samantha Riggs, Case Cunningham with a broken arm, uh, Kirk's friend Rudy, Greg Goins with upcoming surgery, Marilyn Davis and son, Rod Killian, Cleet Vest, missionaries and persecuted Christians, Leonard Waldo, Paul Bartley, not recovery from his arm surgery, Fred Locke, Kathy Dixon, family of Morgan Pritchett, Jeremy Thurman, Melissa's uncle Eddie Butler, family of Vicki Cox's sister, Christy and Ryan Brewer, Kurt and Lisa Smith, uh, Devin uh, with car issues, Sarah Francis Neby, David Edwards uh, and work, Dallas Reed uh, rehab, Larry Reed Parkinson and salvation, Michelle McKiston, Ukraine, uh, students for the end of the year uh, test, Chelsea Farr and baby praise, Glenna's friend's granddaughter, um, Kelly, Jeff Island and his mom, Stanley Bias, Owen Ray, James Pierce, uh, Clarence Smith, uh, Hannah's friend, Michael and Mia, who are going to be traveling, um, Sierra, also Hannah was uh, schoolwork and uh, final leg of that, George Waldo, who we just learned of his, his daughter was on the way to the hospital with him. All right, so that concludes our list. What we'd like to update or add or delete to our list at this time. Great update. All right, what else? I got everybody covered on the list. <laughs> All right, Mickey unspoken. Put my sister Kathy in the mirror. She injured her eye this week and it's not healing like the doctor wants it to. Okay. Anything else? Uh, put the Smith family on the prayer list. All right. Okay. Look at that Shantae Clark. She's recovered from surgery. Debbie Burkhart, she had an aortic repair and that went really well, but now she's going to have back surgery next week. Okay. So pray for her. All right. Okay. Anything else? My ex sister in law, Donna Barry Reed, uh, she had uh, aneurysm several years ago, been having seizures off and on ever since. I had to take her back yesterday in Oxford and spray uh, the aneurysm again. I remember her. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else? Rob, would you open us this morning, please?
Reach for it.
was thinking that that mother that we were singing about, if I could hear my mother pray again, I think the sequel to that song for us would be if I hear y'all sing one more verse of that song again. So, <laughs> But we ended on a good note. We ended on a good note right there. So. Oh, speaking of songs, does anybody have a song for us this morning? <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. Question for us this morning: Are we yearning for Beulah Land? Yeah. 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 Told Chris I'm pretty incompatible with life right now with all these allergies and stuff, but I did promise Milton and. Then Historically, that I try to sing more, so y'all just pray for me and happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there.
see what you're going to do on this one. <laughs> well, I did, I'm not going to put you on the spot. I was just fixing to turn it over. I was going to ask you there. <laughs> We're good either way. <laughs> It is a good morning to be together in God's house and uh, take a moment just to uh, say Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers and uh, what a special group you are. You know, when I was growing up many years ago in Mississippi, I used to listen to the ballad of David Crockett. Do you remember that? Born on a mountain top in Tennessee, greenest state in the land of the free. They left out one verse more pollen than you'll ever see. <laughs> it chokes you to death up here, as it is. So I apologize this morning as I won't sound real clear. Uh, it's the pollen allergies that hit us this time of year. As I was thinking of how we would look at Mother's Day today, I thought, let's go back and look at a special mother out of the Scripture. And so... I thought the power of a mother's love. In Scripture, that this will be background around is Exodus 2, 1 through 10, the basic part of it. Writers have referred to the Exodus of the Hebrew people from Egypt as the creative center of the Old Testament. All of it revolves around what was taking place as Moses went to uh, Egypt and 
I brought the people out and put this nation together. In countless ways, the literature of Israel reveals the magnetic power of this event. They, they looked at it and they praised it and they, everything was built around that event as they looked back to it. And so I thought, what really made this? What was the power that was going on? What was taking place? And it really was that as God was preparing this leader, and he reminds us that even before that a child is born, he's making plans for it. He knew who Moses would be, what he would be. And so what was he doing? He was being very careful to select a mother that would be appropriate to bring this child to what he needed to be. That was the power of what was taking place. As one is written, God could not be everywhere with everybody all the time. So he developed mothers to stand in his stead. The power of that love. As we look at it for a moment in a couple of verses of this scripture, and we'll just look at the, the first couple of those as we are in it. Exodus 2, verse 1 says, And they went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, he was a goodly child. She hid him away for three months. Then it goes on to tell the rest of the story. Let's background it for a moment. Moses' father was Aram. His mother was Jochebed. They were of the tribe of Levi. At that time, it didn't have a lot of significance being of the tribe of Levi, but it would later on. Because if Moses was the tribe of Levi, also was his brother and sister. They both were that tribe. And that would play into a lot of what would take place in later times. As the Hebrew children who had gone into Egypt, remember that uh, Joseph uh, brought them back in when the, during the time of famine. And they, they prospered. And they were instrumental in what was going on. But it says that if there grew up a Pharaoh that did not know them. And so they moved away from being the ones that were really uh, looked up to. They made them slaves. And they made them the builders of what was going there. But the Hebrew children prospered. God prospered them. He blessed them. And there were many of these around. And then the Egyptians began to fear them. Because there were so many. They were afraid there would be a rebellion. An uprising. And so Pharaoh told the midwives. Said now when the children are born. Save the girls. But do away with the boys. And so. They heard the message. It says the midwives feared God. And they didn't do what they were told. And the children were born. And so when. Pharaoh saw that they're still prospering and growing. He informed the Hebrews, you must do away with the boy children. You cannot keep those. And so that was the background for what was taking place when Jochebed had Moses. She had him and she looked at him. And, uh, the King James is talking about him being goodly. Others, uh, scripture translations, said he was a beautiful baby. And she looked at him and she couldn't stand the thoughts of anything happening to him. All that love was there. And so she decided she'd protect him. And so for three months, she protected this child. Even though the, she was one of the slaves and she had her responsibilities, she had Miriam to help her look after him. And so they'd hide him away. But after three months, they realized this couldn't go on. Something better had to be done. And so as she began to look and see, she turned to God. And she said, God, help me know what to do. 
Help me know what to do. How will I take care of this child? How will I protect him? And what happens? God intervenes. A dream comes true. And Moses is protected. So what can we, as we look at this, as we think about it, what can we find from this mother as she's there? Protecting, looking after her child. A reminder that this relates to what mothers are, but it relates to us because there's something unique that Mike said earlier this morning. On Mother's Day, there's one reminder. We all had mothers. Mothers that impacted our lives. That put into us things that are a part of who we are. What we are all about. So let's look at Jochebed for a few moments and see what she learned. What she learned as a mother that reaches across time, even to us today. The first thing was she learned to listen to God. She was asking God for something and she listened when he spoke. She knew that he had chosen her to be mother to that child. That's a special, that's a special blessing. And it certainly was for Moses. Moses who was going to be known across time, even into the Christian church of the day. We look to Moses for many of the things that he gave. And so she was chosen to be a special mother. As a mother, she had a chance to influence a child as no one else does. You as a mother have a chance to influence your child. But there's something else as part of that. Do you realize you as a product of your mother, you will have a chance to influence children across time. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you have that chance to influence and make a difference. And that's what Jochebed was wanting to do. She was wanting to touch Moses' life. And so the story goes on. God told her, said, here's something that you're to do. I have a plan that will take care of you. And he told her that she was to go out Go into the reeds, the, pap the papyrus reeds that were around there. They were used for a lot of different things. She took them and weaved them into a basket for Moses. A basket that would float. And she put Moses in it, kissed him, not knowing exactly what would happen. She didn't know, but God did. But she listened to God. She trusted God. And so she put that basket into the water in faith and let it float. It floated into an area she knew where she was putting it. God had told her. It floated into the area where the Pharaoh's daughter came on a regular basis for a bath with her attendants. And all of a sudden, they saw this basket floating. And she sent one of her servants to get it. Get the basket. Let's look inside. And when they looked inside, she saw the baby. Remember what Scripture tells us, sir? A beautiful baby. She was taken back immediately. And as one writer said, as the basket was open, that the baby began to cry. And he said, the tears of Moses were the jewels that God used to ransom the children of Israel from Egypt. It was a turning point. She couldn't get over this baby. And so she decided that she wanted to keep him. Although her father had been the one that said they had to be put to death. She's, she was going to keep him and protect him as her own child. And then the interesting thing happened. Miriam had been watching all of this. She was the caretaker that her mother had sent. She runs to the princess and said, would you like me to get a nurse for you? And the princess said, yes, 
I need a nurse to take care of him. And she went and got Moses' mother to come and take care of him. It had all worked. What was taking place? God was helping Jochebed as she was taking care and had this opportunity to raise Moses, to raise him so that he would know the faith of the Hebrew people, so that he would know the God and understand. Can you imagine if all he had ever known was the Egyptian gods and goddesses and all the ones they had there? He would have not known what was taking place when God spoke to him out of the burning bush. But his mother had put into him the faith that he needed. But more than that, Hebrews 11, 24 and 25 reminds us that he refused to be known as Pharaoh's daughter's child. He claimed his heritage as a Hebrew <coughs> child. Bring up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not part from it. It's what we're told in the scripture. That's what was taking place here. And so what, what happens as we go on, as we look at Moses and his mother? Second thing is a reminder. It's a precious time when we talk to God. When all the efforts fail, then so many times we begin to say, God, I need to put it in your hands. That's what it happened to Jochebed. She kept him for three months. She saw that that protection time was running out. She needed a higher power. And so she said, God, he's your child. He was God's child. He was God's chosen leader. Think that God's hand was not on the basket, not on the plan. Where to put him in the water? The hope for Moses, what he would be. God knew what the results would be. And so he reached down and he used this mother in that special way. The scripture reminds us there are a lot of special mothers. Reminds us of Hannah who longed for a child and promised God if you'll give me a child I'll give him back to you. And so he gave her Samuel. She kept her promise. She put him, gave him back into the temple. Another, by the name of Mary, who God chose to be the mother of his son. What power there is in the love that goes forth. The love that carries forth. And so, Jochebed knew that it was time to pray. And she had prayed. And her prayer was answered. Third thing she learned. God's plans are always the best plans. She probably had her plans for Moses. But her plans would include Moses growing up to be a slave. God had something else in mind. God was growing to train him. He used his mother to train him in the basics of his faith to know and understand God and how he's to deal with him. But then, for the years that he was with the Egyptian princes, God trained him in how to run a government, how to deal with people. He was going to need all of that, how to direct them, how to build a nation. Forty years he went into the wilderness. And as a shepherd, he learned the wilderness. God was training him. He would spend all of those years later, 40 more years, going through the wilderness. He would know it by then. And then came the time when the, he would step into God's role, role. And he was ready because his mother had given him an early acquaintance, an early knowledge of God. All of this to prepare him for those years that he would lead his people what did he learn from his mother? I bet if you think for a moment this morning, 
some of these things you learn from your mother. He learned patience. Moses should have a special crown for dealing with the Jewish people. How many times did he have to go to God and say, God, don't wipe them out. I know you want to, but don't wipe them out. Let me take care of them. Over and over. He did that. He learned love. He learned how to love and care. He learned caring. When they were hungry, he asked for manna. When they wanted meat, he asked for the quail. When they wanted water, he said, God, show me the water for them. Over and over. He was a caring. His mother had taught him. But the most powerful thing he learned was the power of a living God. Most of us learn from my mothers the power of a living God, of what it means to walk with him and have him there. Moses knew when he heard that voice who it was. And Moses had to step back into the role his mother had taught him. He'd been away from God for a long time. He had to come back and begin that walk again. And so it's a reminder, mothers, you are a living example of the Heavenly Father. Did you ever think about that? You're an example of Him, what He is, and what He's to do. An example that children need, your children and the other children, you have a chance to influence those around you and what's there. Peter Marshall, who was chaplain of the Senate for many, many years, and I've shared other things about him. He did a Mother's Day sermon one time. It was entitled, Keepers of the Spring. And he told a parable about a little community that was at the foot of the mountain. And it was successful and everything was happy because it had a beautiful spring from up above that flowed pure water down into the valley. Everything run well. The people's lives were good. The factories were good. Everything was there because of the clear water. And the secret to the clear water was a man that was there up on the top called the keeper of the springs. He cleared those springs. He took care of them. He took everything out of them to make sure they always ran pure. But one day, as governments do, they were looking for a way to cut the price of things. And so they decided, as they looked at the budget, who is this keeper of the springs? And they said, he's somebody that lives on the mountain. I think he must uh, work for the fishing game. He doesn't do much. <laughs> I couldn't pass that up, Mike. He, he enjoys his, himself on the mountain up there with the springs. And so they said, well, I bet we can just cut his salary out. He's, he doesn't do much anyway. We just cut that out. We'll take care of that. And so they did. But then all of a sudden, something began to happen. The water wasn't clear anymore. It wasn't pure. Things began to grow in it. It began to clog up the factories. The children became sick. They came back together and said, what could have been the problem? What's happening? And one of them said, it seems it all began when we got rid of the keeper of the springs. And so they hired him back. He went back. He cleaned the water again. He made the community successful again. Because it was the touch that had made the difference. Peter Marshall goes on to say, mothers are the keepers of the spring. They're the ones that mold lives. They're the ones that put into the children the ability to know the difference between right and wrong. They put into integrity they put into them the love of God. How important are mothers today? So important that they touch 
and change the world in which they live. So on this Mother's Day, we should be praying for women of integrity, women who love God, to take a stand and change the world in which we live. The secret to what Jesus taught us comes through the love of a mother. Mothers, do you realize your role? Do you realize the importance of what you do? Let's pray. Father, how thankful we are that we can look at the life of Moses as we look into it. We see his success came from the touch of a loving caring mother and Father how thankful we are that we come this morning giving thanks for those mothers who touched our lives and those mothers here who are still touching lives still making a difference for Father in the love of a mother we see your love come through we see what you meant for us to be as your children. Father, I pray this morning that you would bless us with that love. You'd have us to experience it. You'd have us to know the power of it in all that we do. Father, I pray this morning that there's someone here that doesn't know your love that open their hearts and invite you into their lives. Father, bless us during our time of invitation. May your power fall upon us, for we pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's stand together.
I better let's send a couple of boys at it, so no one y'all won't go back and help. We'll make it extra milk. <laughs> It's been a special day to be together as a close. Brother Jerry, would you say a closing prayer? Father, we, we thank you for your presence this morning with us. <coughs> Father, we thank you for the reminders of the importance of our mothers. We thank you uh, that you reminded us uh, through scripture uh, 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 of a loving mother. And Father, we just pray that uh, uh, today that uh, uh, we just uh, be a wonderful day with, with families and with mothers. And Father, we, we thank you for them and, and the love that they, they give us. And so Father, we just pray that you bless our day. Uh, thank you for uh, a wonderful service this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.